There are two types of slow practice and most people know only about the first type. You slow down all the motions and that helps to sort of decipher the notes and what notes you're aiming to play next. However, this does not exercise the reaction of your fingers, so how fast they are and how accurate they are. Welcome back to my channel, I hope you're doing amazing today. If you're new here, my name is Samina, I'm a classical violinist, violin teacher, content creator, and I graduated from the Juilliard School a year ago. In the Learn With Me series, I show you how to practice smarter and not longer, and we learn tips and tricks for the violin together. Today we'll be talking about slow practice and how to do it efficiently. From what I've seen, maximum effect guaranteed. So the mistake that most people do is to simply slow down everything that is in the music. But most of the time, what you need to do is not just slow practice, but slow reactive practice. One thing that I always have to remind my students of whenever they are too ambitious about the tempo is that your fingers can play way faster than your ears can actually hear. Let that sink in. We should always cater towards the slower, weaker, and more struggling factor whenever we play the instrument. You want to be very conservative in your slow practice and how you do it. it needs to be accurate. So what should slow practice be? The only thing that you should be slowing down in your slow practice is the tempo. Only the tempo, not the motion of your fingers, not your ears, and certainly not how active your brain thinks. Meaning that you should constantly be on top of what note you're about to play next. Now this totally redefines slow practice for most people. Slow practice will become a lot more challenging this way. However, it'll also be a lot more meaningful and much more worth your time. So here's what you wanna do. Slow your tempo down, but the motion of your fingers hitting the string remains fast, like this. fingers should really snap into place. This way you really teach your fingers what motion they should be remembering once you speed up the tempo again. When you're doing that and you snap your finger into the wrong place, don't worry about it. Analyze if your fingers snapped into place too sharp or too flat and repeat with intent. Do not repeat the same motion blindly and without thinking over and over again because the more you do that, the more you're practicing the wrong motion. And that is actually way harder to untrain, okay? So take your time, analyze, and repeat with intent. So now that you know what slow practice should really be about, here are some exercise variations for you to try. First up, good old punctuator practice. There is a reason why this is one of the most effective and classic, most popular exercises out there. It sure is one of my favorites because you get the reaction for your fingers, but also you get this extra pocket of time so your ears get a chance to catch up as well. So you're training both your fingers and your ears with this exercise. Two birds with one stone. <laughs> is that the term? Yeah. If you're rather new to punctuative practice, this is what you want to do. Practice in groups of two notes. The first note long, the second note short, like so. And then the opposite, the first note short and the second note long. passages you want to think in groups of three. So the first note long and the second and third notes short like this. Then the first note short and the second note long, third note short. Finally, the first and second notes short and the third note long. See how this exercise makes it still slowed down for your ears, but your left hand still gets that fast reaction in? Now that's what I'm talking about and that's what we want. You do want to do this with very articulated notes not legato, because filling that extra gap with sound really only distracts your ears from what really matters and it serves a different purpose. So short notes, not long notes, that's for another time. And also start at a tempo where you feel like it's way too slow and you might get impatient. 
that's the tempo you want to start off with because we need to train our ears so don't judge the tempo judge the activity of your ears okay super important so the next exercise would be note repetition practice to further train your finger reaction this exercise helps a lot what you want to do is to play the sequence between notes twice like this <laughs> about the left hand and we're going to talk about the bow hand but before we do if you like this video so far and you feel like you learned something new today please consider giving this video a thumbs up or maybe even following um, maybe you want to share this video with a friend who should do more slow practice and um, yeah a thumbs up would really help so so on the right arm the bow arm Slow practice is just as important, but serves a different purpose. Because the sound that we produce with our bow is so affected by the stick, aka the bow, we do slow practice to get to know the possibilities of how slow we could make our stick go. For example, the spiccato bowing, okay? If we're fast enough, our bow would jump on its own and we primarily, basically, only have to make sure that the bow retains tension for it to keep reacting. But the more we slow down, the less our bow reacts and it turns into a normal staccato, which is just separated but not necessarily off the string, like reacting off the string as much. So we're talking about slow practice today, not spiccato or staccato and how to do that. So I'm going to be assuming that you can already do a spiccato off the string and just want to know how to do slow practice on the right hand. So the exercise is do a normal fast spiccato, slower, and slower and slower to <laughs> see how slow you could actually go while maintaining the reaction of the bow. Really push your limits until you get to that breaking point where your bow doesn't want to jump anymore or react anymore. So here's how to do it. Yeah, that's where it wants to break. Yeah, I'm holding the bow at this point. Also, it's getting weaker. It's less horizontal stroking and more vertical stroking, and therefore it scratches more easily. I would do a little more horizontal bow to get a little more ring into the string. However, at this slow tempo, it's pretty much impossible. So I could add more vertical pressure to make it more scratchy though, so it's more articulated. Don't necessarily want that, but still it is a breaking point of jumping to flat. So basically, even if it scratches, that is where the bow stops reacting. Knowing your limits like this really is valuable because it'll make you a more versatile and more adaptable player. So what I like to think of is like the vocabulary in a language, right? The more words you know, the more you can express yourself. The same goes with technique and also emotional or like musical education. The more you're exposed to, the more you know, the more you can apply it and select your musical choices, right? My philosophy is really to see technique as a necessary supplement to make music happen the way we interpret it. So technique always serves music and never the other way around. That being said, I am an online violin teacher. So if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one violin lessons with me, no matter where you are in the world, you can sign up and apply in the description down below. Also, as per usual, I am only one person with one path of life, okay? So if you do have a different opinion or you want to add your own advice, please share it in the comments down below so we can all start a discussion and learn from each other. Yeah, other than that, thanks for watching today's video. I'll see you in the next video. I hope you have a great day. Bye.